And I'm glad that uh, the UN University um, and the EU, you work very closely with the different sovereigns um, on the continent because the climate change knows no boundaries. Uh, if one of our South Africa's water resource, uh, Lesotho, is impacted negatively by climate change, South Africa will also suffer. I grew up in a Bantu stand called former Gazankulu. The boundaries were very rigid there, and that's why we could not deal with malaria, because the Bantu stand I was right at the border of these two bantu, former vendor and former Gazankulu. So when the Gazankulu government, so when the Gazankulu government fumigate the area, the mosquitoes, they will just cross over to the other. And in that part of my country, malaria was forever a problem. Why? Because there were so rigid political boundaries, which there was no collaboration, there was no common work in combating malaria. So similarly, you can't deal with climate change uh, just through sovereign jurisdictions. Uh, climate change knows no boundaries, and it's for this reason that we've got to have a global approach, an African approach in dealing with the issue of the climate change. Infrastructure development is the cornerstone of any thriving economy. South Africa is not infrastructure for uh, productivity. Some of us who arrive late for our meetings at work because of the poor public infrastructure. Infrastructure also enhances the quality of life for our citizens. All of us, we want clean air, clean water, which I understand Jobek is experiencing some challenges, so far as water is concerned. Direct your anger at the metro, Johannesburg metro, not at me, because uh, everything is reduced to national government. And infrastructure lays the foundation for the long-term economic growth. And our government recognizes this. We've made significant investments in critical infrastructure. These investments are not just about roads and bridges. They are about creating jobs. They are about reducing poverty. These investments are about making South Africa a competitive player in the global economy. In South Africa, we feel the negative impact of climate change in imported sectors such as infrastructure, water, and energy. The frequency of nat natural disasters and the results thereof are felt daily in South Africa. Therefore, investments in renewable energy sources, water conversation systems, and sustainable urban development are key to mitigating and adapting to climate change. The fiscals <clears throat> cannot afford to financially support the amount of investment we require for climate resilient infrastructure. Africa as a continent needs an annual investment of 190 billion US dollars for its clean energy transition. 57% of African countries are in debt and they are spending so much money on debt service costs, thus disabling them to undertake invest, investments in climate change uh, in climate resilient um, infrastructure. As a South African government, we have undertaken different measures, innovative ways to seek to finance the 
this infrastructure that we need. Because we do need to discuss other innovative financing mechanisms for this infrastructure, such as green bonds, carbon credits, to fund these climate resilient infrastructure projects. And like I said, South Africa, we are undertaking innovative measures uh, to finance the climate resilient infrastructure. The infrastructure fund is a testament to our commitment to stimulating infrastructure investment and blending public and private financing to build a better and a more sustainable future. The infrastructure fund stands out as a pivotal move designed to stimulate investment across various critical sectors of our economy. This approach seeks to mobilize public and private resources to mitigate risks for private investors and to foster an environment where collaborative financing models thrive. Yes, challenges such as securing funding are huge. However, ensuring sustainability and integrating the latest technologies are other additional challenges. For us, these challenges should be treated as opportunities for innovation, for forging robust private-public partnership. This should also be treated as an opportunity for leveraging the power of technology in our infrastructure development goals. At the heart of effective infrastructure planning lies data-driven decision-making. This is where the SA TIDE program has continued to play a very critical role. Research informs our policy decision-making processes, even though you may not like some of the decisions we take, but we do try to pay attention to evidence in order for us to take certain decision. This collaboration of world-class researchers, policymakers, the National Treasury, uh, University, the United Nations University wider, and valued donors like the EU and UK, FC, DO, is building bridges between researchers as well as policymakers. This helps us to ensure that our strategies are built on sound evidence and an understanding of how the real world works, not how our minds work.